Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, we're talking about the brand new Ombre Essentiel from Chanel. These are the new single eyeshadows. These have existed before, but there's been a reformulation, new shades to talk about. So that is today's video. But before we go any further, let's take a second to grab our iced coffee or a hot coffee. Let's take a sip and let's get started. We're going to go ahead and start with just basic product information. There are timestamps below, so go ahead and check those out. So the previous version of these single eyeshadows dates from 2016, and I definitely think that they were due for new shades. I'm not certain if a reformulation was necessary, but new colors, definitely. So just a little bit of a broad comparison here with the new versus old formula. The 2016 version had 10 shades, whereas the 2024 version has 14. It's a mixture of matte and satin with one top coat shade. There are two shades in particular that are repeats. These ex existed before and they have uh, made a revisit with the reformulation. The rest of the colors are all brand new. The two colors that are from the 2016 version are the, the shade Talpa and the shade Sable. Those are both very neutral and I do have swatch comparisons of the old and new formula of those two. The 2016 version comes with two applicators, one sponge tip and one little brush, whereas the new formula here comes with two applicators, one sponge tip, one regular brush, and one little tapered brush for eyeliner. And the new formula of the eyeshadows is marketed specifically as eyeshadow, eyeliner, and also eyebrow, depending on the shades you choose from. And so they're sort of marketing it a little bit different. And I do like that it comes with a little eyeliner brush because a one and done, or I'm sorry, a single eyeshadow in my opinion, should be a one and done. And if you can use it as eyeliner, why not? Something interesting to note about the ingredient list is they have changed the formulation. One of the biggest changes is they've added Ville de Sauge, which I believe is sage oil. And I do find that this oil has added a creaminess and a silkiness to the texture. Another thing to note, the previous version came with gold interlocking CCs and the new version comes with a white one. It's pretty basic, but just a little bit different packaging. Now, the new formula says it expires after 18 months, so when you open it at home, theoretically you're supposed to use it up after 18 months, which is the same as this one here. I'll go ahead and put the ingredient list up here, so I'll go ahead and pause it. And one last thing to note is the price and the weight. So originally, these were 48 Canadian plus tax, the new version, the new formula that just came out a couple days ago is 53 Canadian plus tax. So there are $5 more each, interesting. And the 2016 formula, the one that's, or was 48 Canadian plus tax, was 2.2 grams of product. Whereas the 2024 $53 version is 1.9 grams of product. So they've increased the price and they've decreased the quantity. I don't know what these brands are doing, what they're thinking. Like they really must think that we're all very stupid. It's really something like it's one thing to increase the price. I get it every every year. They increase everything by a couple of dollars. I don't understand why they increased the price and they decreased the product. I'm sure they'll say it's better ingredients, it's better quality, you know, it lasts longer, blah, blah, blah. But it's really like, is is this a shrinkflation? Is that what they call it when you buy something that's either the same price or increased in price and they've just diminished the quantity? Anyway, I needed to share that with you. I made a mistake earlier when I said that, that there were two formulas. There's actually three. So there is satin, matte, and metallic. So let's go ahead and talk about the shades that I got. The first one here is the only topper shade. This one here is 220 Blanc Perle, and this is a satin formula. So it's like a white pearl, that's the name of it. And this one here is a topper. So I played with this at the counter swatching, and it's very beautiful. It's very exquisite. It has a sort of transformative quality to it. This I would wear on its own for a sort of 
mermaid glow holographic finish. However, it's really stunning on top of anything. Anything matte, satin, metallic, it doesn't really matter. It sort of transforms it. And if you remember, the Mermaid Glow Beau Ciel that came out with the Winter Glow release, I believe it was called. This one here is basically the Mermaid Glow Beau Ciel, but as an eyeshadow. It's pink, it has a shift, it's technically a satin finish, but it, it, it's, it's so luminous. It's one of those colors that looks like you're wearing seven in one, so not seven, but it looks like you're wearing multiple different eyeshadows. And again, it's gorgeous just as a wash, but layering it on top of any shade, just it transforms it into something really exquisite. The next shade I got is 222 Jade Facetti. So a beautiful jade color here. And this one is a metallic finish. So I inadvertently ended up getting one of each, of each formula, this beautiful green. I am definitely drawn to the colorful, the very pretty, and I was really drawn to this. Oh, I think this is so lovely. Maybe what I'll do is after I swatch all the shades that I got, I'll go ahead and add this topper shade on top just to show you what it looks like. Next is number 232 Lila Poudre, so a powdery lilac. And this one here is a matte. I saw this one online and I knew that I wanted this one. So of course, when I went in store, I went ahead and bought this one as well. Very pretty. I do, I mean, I love color. I love purple. This one here is a little bit lighter. Hmm. Let me go ahead and dig in a little bit. There we go. I just had to pick it up a little bit more. So this one here is a little bit softer, just, you know, touching it, it feels very silky. But just to get the color payoff, I did have to dig in there a little bit. So that is good to note. And then the last one here, I got 236 Brun Talpa. Talpa has existed before. This is one of the ones that I have already. And I did get a repeat. I did get the exact same one. And the reason that I got the exact same one twice is because I do think that there is a difference in quality. When I was swatching these just side by side, they feel different. The new version, the new formula feels creamier. It feels more satiny. I think it's the sage oil. Something about the formulation feels nicer. It feels more buttery. It feels smoother. And the older one that I have here almost felt, it felt drier and chalkier compared to the new one. So this is uh, just the Brun Talpa, the Talpa on its own. And this one here is an absolutely stunning one and done. This is gorgeous. It doesn't really need anything else with it. You can just look, look at that. So buttery, so smooth. A little bit of eyeliner and a mascara and you're out the door. Let me just swatch the older version here. It feels different. It doesn't feel quite as silky as buttery and there is a little bit of difference in the shade as well i think that the older version is a little bit warmer i think that the new version is a like a hint more neutral cool just a little bit so there's a little bit of a difference there here is a photo i took at the counter side by side of sable and talpa the old and the new so the new is on top those are the ones on top and the older version is on the bottom. Just to show you, I didn't get Sable. I thought it was nice, but wasn't my favorite. Talpa, I really like the new version. I like anything a little bit more neutral, cool. I think this one hits more neutral. It's not really a cool tone, but just a little bit more neutral. I think it's just such an amazing effervescent taupe. So I really, I rarely buy the same thing twice just because it's a new formula, you know this but there was something there that was really special, so I ended up getting it. Now, let me just go ahead and take this here, this beautiful pearly white topper shade and show you. Let me just go ahead and put it on top. See, it just transforms everything. Let me just add a little bit everywhere. 
just adds a beautiful shift. I'll go ahead and put this on top of the older Talpa. Oh, it just enhances everything. It just, it, it's beautifying. It's beautiful. I love this shade so much. So I think today what we'll do is create two entire, t entirely different eye looks. I think one look will be very classic. It'll be Talpa. Talpa is a one and done. I'll do something very neutral, very beautiful. And the other side, it's going to be a bit more fun and colorful. However, before we do that, I may as well add a few more swatches here. So I have the uh, Dior Single Eyeshadow in Beige Mitza. This is a gorgeous one and done shade. I just want to compare it to Talpa here. I think Beige Mitza still has a bit more nuance. It has, it's, I don't know, it's like neutral but it, I think maybe a little bit warmer. I think it's a little bit more brownie, whereas the new Talpa is a little bit more taupey neutral. I also have the Quint here from Dior, and this is Soft Cashmere. So maybe I'll just go ahead and swatch this one here and see how it compares to some of these. No, this one, I mean, Listen, if you like these, you would all love the other, but they're not, I'm not seeing any dupes here. Now for the green, let me just swatch the beautiful jade green again on its own, because I really don't have anything like this, even though I love this type of color, but I do have this single from Chantecai from years ago. What was this one? Mare? I don't even remember which release this was, but this beautiful foam minty green I love it I think this one will be a little bit more blue based yeah it's a little bit more blue not quite the same I also have this butterfly quartet from Chantecai I'm wondering if this shade here will be close to anything probably not I'm sort of running out of real estate here I mean this one is green but it has a shift to it it's not quite as green as the Jade Facetti. And then I have the Hummingbird palette. I don't think so. I mean, I don't think so. Maybe this. I'm not sure what this would look like, possibly. Okay, maybe up here. Uh, no. No, I don't know. But let me know in the comments if there's anything that you can think of that you think might go with the four eyeshadow singles that I got and I can do some more swatch comparisons in the next video. All right, let's dive into Talpa, our beautiful one and done. So I'm going to use this BK Beauty brush, the 203. Everything that I'm mentioning, the brushes, they're all listed in the affiliate links down below. The reason I'm using this brush here is that I find it's great for a one and done shadow because Oftentimes for myself, if I think of a one and done eyeshadow, I also want a one and done makeup brush. I don't want anything too complicated. This one here is a great shape. And oh, I just think that this is applying really in a beautiful way. It's pretty. It doesn't feel dry. feels creamy. I think there's maybe a little bit of fallout, but... I always do my eyes first and I love it because this brush here, it's laying everything down, but then I'm just going into the crease like this and blending it out. There's no need to add another color, you know, just to respect the one and done nature of a single eyeshadow. We're going to do something more funky on this side, which is fine, but oftentimes if I'm choosing a single it's because i want this i listen i've been talking the whole time and that's basically done i'll clean this up a little bit add a little bit of eyeliner and mascara and that'll be that look that's what i want as always instead of using eye makeup remover i'm taking a little dot of eye cream sample this is from dior the prestige line the eye concentrate and I take a little bit on a q-tip like this and I just clean it up because I take time and money in the morning 
to hydrate my under eye, so why would I remove it with eye makeup remover? Just going like this very quickly. And then I'll use a little bit of black eyeliner. This is the Chanel waterproof eyeliner. I'll just do a little line on top here. Nothing dramatic. I'll draw a few little dots on the bottom lashes like this. Just a whisper on top as well. And then for the mascara, I'm going into the new Givenchy Z mascara. It's wonderful. And that is done, that is it. We're going to go into the funky side here and I'm going to go into my beautiful matte lilac color here. I'm really intrigued by this one. I'm going into a Refer 02 brush. I'm just going to pack some of this on the lid. And I think, well I know, this side is going to be more colorful. I should also note that I did prime my eyelids off camera. I'm using the Fenty Beauty Eyeshadow Primer. I have hooded oily eyes, so it's impossible for me to wear makeup without applying something to set everything. Otherwise, nothing will stay in place. I'm just going to use a big fluffy brush. This is the BK Beauty 211, just to blend this out a little bit. I'll add a little bit more in the crease here. I am noticing just like a fine line in the corner here. I think that was from the primer. It's not picking up anywhere else. It's just here in the, in the little crease. So I just wanted to mention that and you can probably see it as well. I think that this is very pretty. It could be a one and done. I think a one and done can be any color. It doesn't have to be a neutral. A beautiful lilac is really nice for brown eyes. Taking a Refer 03 pencil brush, I'm just tracing it on the bottom lashes as well. And yes, I did also pick up the lilac mascara, but I don't think I'm going to use it today. I have something else in mind. I'm just tracing this here. Although, what am I doing? I'm going to tr use this, the little sponge tip applicator here. You can wet these with a bit of setting spray if you wanted to do a little bit of liner. It doesn't really, you can't really see it when it's lilac on lilac, but if you wet it, you could do like a little eyeliner action with that, which I think would be very pretty. Now, next up, I think I'm going to go into the beautiful Jade Green, and I'm using a flat brush here, the Refer 28. Just going to pick up this color. I could have, you know, kept this part of the eye bare just to apply the green, but I don't mind. I think that these go well together. I bought these. I don't know if I had a plan, to be honest, like when I swatched them all. I knew I loved all of these individually, and I just assumed that they would go well together. And I think I'm right. This one here... I am noticing more fallout. I think there's just a difference in texture. This one here is the metallic version. The, the green one, is a bit, it's the metallic finish. There's a little hint of flakiness here, just under here, but I'll clean it up in a moment like I did on the other side. I'm going to clean this up before I go any further because I don't think the other one will have any fallout. I'm going to go into that pearly white shade last. I'm going to press it with my finger and that way there will be zero fallout of that one. I think that these are very pretty mixed together. The reason I'm using a finger versus a brush is I find that it just shows up better. I used it with the fingertip at the counter when I was swatching and I just find that this type of topper shade goes, like it just applies nicer with the fingertip like this. This is sort of just transforming everything in this pinky pearlescent finish. 
I will give this eye the same treatment with a little bit of black mascara and eyeliner and I'll be back in a moment. I just added a little bit of water fresh tint in the shade medium and the Armani concealer in the shade 5.5. For the bronzer and blush component, I'm going to go into my new Le Beige uh, Sunkissed Healthy Glow Oversized Blah 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 in the shade Medium Rose Gold. I think that this is very pretty and the more I use it, the more I like it. The blush for me is the standout component. What I'm going to do is using an Angie Hot and Flashy contour brush, the A507. I'm going to actually mix both of the bronzer and highlighter. And on me, it'll be like a beautiful, luminous, glowy bronzer. A little bit of this beautiful rose gold blush. I think that the name medium rose gold is relevant to the blush. Like all the names like, you know, light coral, medium coral, blah, blah, blah. I think it's more to do with the blush in each palette more than anything else, I'm guessing, because the blush on me looks like a beautiful rose gold. And I think mixing all three shades together on the cheek just gives such a beautiful flush. For the lips, I'm going to keep it nude to try to balance uh, my eyes. I'm using one of the dual-ended liquid lipsticks. This is the shade Intense Caramel. It's just a beautiful, neutral, nude color on me. Okay, this is the finished look. Now, please vote in the comments which eye makeup look do you prefer? Do you prefer look number one? This is a true one and done in its essence and its nature. Very pretty, very easy to use. I used one single brush, that was, that was it. And then we have look number two, definitely more colorful, more funky. I think it's so pretty, I think it's stunning. I, I love both looks. I love all four colors that I chose and I just realized that the, um, the pearly white topper shade is in a separate category from the rest of the singles. So when you look at the eyeshadow landing page, it's there, but it's just not with the rest of the singles. So I'll go ahead and provide a separate affiliate link for that one there. But honestly, I love all four. I think if I had to choose, like if I had to put them in order, it would be Talpa. I think it's just like, it's just undeniable. It's so pretty. I do think that the formula is better. I just think it's creamier, it's smoother, it's silkier, it's less cho less chalky, less dry. So I think Talpa first, followed very closely by this topper shade. I just, for me, this is a very fun, transformative, easy to use, gorgeous color, followed very closely by the lilac color. I think this would be gorgeous on its own. I'm going to wear it again gonna wear it a lot on my channel and then followed closely by the jade the green jade I am disappointed that it it had a little bit of flakiness when I was applying it it just sort of flew a little bit and there was a bit of fallout but I cleaned it up just that to note but the shrinkflation you guys five dollars more and a little bit less product if they were going to increase the price that's one thing, but to increase the price and have less product, like, uh, yeah. Let me know what you think of that down in the comments below. I'm sure you have thoughts and opinions. Let me know what you think of these new eyeshadows, the colors available. Are you excited? Are you into one and done eyeshadows? Let me know what you think. If you are not subscribed to my channel, you are definitely missing out. I used to work for Chanel, I don't work for them anymore, but I have retained a lot of brand and product information. I do a lot of reviews, a lot of tutorials, I mix and match old and new, so you will definitely miss out if you're not subscribed, so make sure to do that. Anyway, that's all I have for you guys for today. Thank you so much for stopping by. Hope you have a beautiful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.